Guys, we're going to start off WSO and chill the right way. I have Shannon O'Brien with me from Leicester City Women. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. You are the first player that's been on the channel. Wow. So, you've got your claps, you've got your claps, you've got your claps. Yeah, we're gonna add we're gonna add balloons and all that stuff. They're gonna come from the time. <laughs> but yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm I'm great. Um really excited now just for just for the season to start. Mm. Um, especially like from never playing in this league before, just ready to get going now. So I just want the days to be over and done with quick so we can get to Saturday. Yeah, definitely. What would you say is like your first kind of memories of the WSL? Oh, the WSL is quite recent, actually. Um, mm. I would say probably after the um, the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, I probably watching it more. Um, once then I was promoted into the championship with Carbers when I started really looking into it. Mm. Uh, but I remember watching, I think it was Arsenal, Chelsea, I'm going to say. It was like, a, it was a crazy, I just remember watching a crazy game and it was one of the games that I'd, one of the first games that had been on TV mm. uh, that I could actually watch. Um, but yeah, it's been quite recent. I'm happy now that there's a lot more coverage for it so people can watch it a lot more. Yeah, definitely. That's Was it the 2019 World Cup? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have been. Yeah, that's when I first got into it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that kind of World Cup really did help people kind of understand like how far the women's game has come and like how it really does need the support. So, like, I'm really happy with what's going on in the WSL and, like, how the coverage is going to really take it to the next level. How's your preparation been so far? Uh, it's been intense. Um, <laughs> I think it's been one of the, my first full pre-seasons where I've mm. been able to really to get into things. Um, but, yeah, I think I think it's just been a bit of a buzz around. Um, it's like not something that I've really experienced before is that everyone's like that excited to be to be where we're at but you know it's yeah. obviously focused and all that kind of stuff and just treat it like a normal pre-season but obviously in the back of your head you're just thinking like wow like this is yeah. WS and not not any other normal one yeah yeah what was it like your first session back into pre-season first session I remember it being red hot and I mm. remember red in it because we got yeah. cold that it was fitness testing before football mm. um, so i come back and I was desperate to be back but as soon as I seen the it's just fitness all day I was like <sighs> yeah running's but, never the one <laughs> yeah and it was 30 degrees and I was just yeah I was dreading it but to be honest once I got into it I was all right um but yeah like I think especially obviously with some I was been pretty like boring and you couldn't really do a lot and yeah hasn't really been out either I think once we got back into to football and everyone started I mean obviously we'd had our month off everyone had started to get back into things that first session everyone was just like I think excited to to finally be back and yeah and do something. but yeah the first session first session was good it was a good start to things but yeah fitness so not that great mm. what would you say it was like being a footballer during Covid difficult especially as um before I joined Leicester as part-time as well. Yeah. Um, it was, I, I was still working um, and all of that kind of stuff. So it was difficult for me because a lot of the team, people that I was playing with before Leicester were, were in my position and, and working as well as training. Yeah. Like just I was at home at that point. Then once I joined Leicester and uh, COVID was starting to settle down a little bit but it was still obviously no fans back in or anything mm. um it was difficult then because I joined like a much bigger team and a, a team that was more followed but you yeah. still couldn't meet anyone or do anything so it was quite restricted like that it was hard for me to not settle but get into things with like the media and um yeah. stuff because you couldn't really interact with anybody but now, hopefully, now with everyone's back in, it's going to be a lot easier just for people to just, you know, just come and watch and enjoy football again and everyone can start, you know, meeting meeting different people and, and just enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. I, I really agree with that. What do you think it's going to be like with fans back? And, like, are you excited for that first cheer as soon as you touch the ball? Yeah, definitely. Especially, you know, when we, when we play our first game at the King Power as mm. well. Um fans have just been like, a massive miss and especially with like you want to want your families to be there as, as well and 
when we won the league and there was nobody in there, although it was amazing, we still obviously wanted other people to share that that moment with us. So I think when the fans are back, I think it gets everybody else excited for the mm. game as well. As soon as you hear some shouting from the side or like people cheering or even booing or whatever, you, yeah. you get quite excited and you get into the game a bit. I know I get, I just have a little laugh to myself sometimes <laughs> and just think like everyone's up for it. So I'm going to yeah. be up for it. So yeah, I think it'll be the best thing is is the fans this year. Yeah, definitely. Do you ever feel yourself like changing how you play by it if someone says something? Like say someone in the crowd is like, switch it. Do you feel like, oh my God, let me just look for the switch or are you like kind of just like, let me just stick to what I was doing anyway? To be honest, it does ha- it does affect you because mm. I think from, from me watching games of football and if I'm watching it on TV or whatever and I'm shouting things for them to do, and then in my head, I'm thinking, well, they probably can see something that I can't see. Yeah. I probably do give it a quick glance and think, oh, actually, should I? But in my own head, I've got to actually just stay switched up. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I've got to trust myself. Yeah, I can't just, just switch it if they want me to switch. Especially if I'm about 40 yards out and they shout, yeah. shoot. I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get told off by the gaffer. But yeah, I'm gonna make sure when I'm in King Power, I'm gonna, like if I see any switches, I'll just shout switch, and then like you can no. choose, you can choose whether to take it on or not. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what has it been like joining a team like Leicester and like getting to know everyone? Yeah, it's been it's been mental. Um, it's so so much different to what Cobb was like, and just it's just so much more like followed like around around the world. Yeah. Um and. And just like the attention on it, obviously I joined when we were halfway through the season and we were going to, winning the league was very likely. So obviously I had much more pressure on my shoulders to to perform in that sense. Um, but it's been it's been crazy just walking into that kind of setup and playing with those kind of players who have, you know, some have played in the WSR before. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's been amazing for me. It's been a dream come true for me, you know, that, I'm from not local, so it's been easy for me to to settle and and just get to know everybody. And everybody's so just so I think we're all just on the same wavelength when it comes to that, and we all know where we want to be. Yeah. So for me to walk into that kind of environment, it was it was pretty easy to be honest. Does it help? Do you ever talk to any of the players that have played in WSL to like get any advice or like what to expect, or is it kind of just like you'll kind of learn when you get into the season? No, I mean, of of course, I think we have the conversations all the time about what to expect from from different teams. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the players, you know, Tash, uh, Abby, Jess, just loads of them have, have played there. And you know, if you didn't ask, then what was you might as well like if yeah. they're there for advice, you might as well ask. So they've been helpful, you know, because they've obviously been there and done that. So yeah, they. It's a regular conversation. I think that everybody needs in the team is to get that insight because some people can offer that that you just wouldn't have a clue on unless you you've been there so yeah it's been helpful yeah I can tell like I get the kind of vibe from Leicester that you're just like a tight-knit family and it's just like everyone kind of plays for each other and I think that is what's helped you guys get promoted so do you feel like there is a leader in the team or like collectively you're all leaders that all come together to achieve that goal uh yeah I think I think we are we are close like you said and I think we all do kind of take different things like that we all probably lead an example one way or another uh, there are obviously bigger bigger personalities and bigger leaders within yeah. the group you know like for example um and abby who's just recently joined they're the kind of people that you can look to like that of course uh barks the captain but i think collectively we we all know what we want to achieve and we all realize that we need to all take responsibility for things like that so no matter who, like how old you are, if you're a young player, or old player, I think everybody kind of recognizes that you need to step up now, and yeah. everybody has that kind of leadership responsibility. Uh, what do you do to kind of get away from the game or to like relax? Um, to be honest, not a lot. Really, <laughs> <Because> I am <laughs> obsessed. When I mean obsessed with football, I'll come home and, and watch whatever games mm. on on TV, and yeah. Um, I guess to come away from it, I, you know, just take my dog out or I'll meet up with a couple of the girls outside of training and mm. you know, go and do different things like that. Or 
just you know watching run on tv and stuff but in terms of like actual hobbies and stuff it's literally just watching football. <laughs> it's everyday ball it's everyday ball yeah exactly i'm a massive football fan so i follow them as well so mm. it's literally yeah every day if there's football on i'm on the yeah yeah I, I hear that but it explains it probably explains why you've gone so far in it because it's like when you kind of live and breathe it it's like you're always going to give it your all yeah I think that helps to be honest having that that kind of dedication to to it you know if you like you said if you live and breathe it then you know, it'll take you it'll take you further than if you didn't really care about it yeah what tv shows are you watching because you said you like to watch a bit of random tv so like throw some names um well I love Grey's Anatomy that is my number one. I've never watched it, you know. I've never watched it. I, I know it's really popular, but yeah, I've never watched it. To be fair, I only started watching it during COVID because I never had the time to watch it. Mm. And then we're at home for, for a year. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's like 18 series or something of it. So I had 18. so much time on my hands. Oh, so I watched God. it all the whole way through. Yeah. Um, what else? I love The Walking Dead. Uh, Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones. That was one I really, I really got. It. Are you Team Lannister or Team Stark? Stark, of course. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. You, I hated the ending. It really, I, yeah. it's one of my favorite things ever. But they really let themselves down with the ending. I, yeah, stress me out. It yeah, do you remember when out. they were um they were there was a behind the scenes thing and they were reading the script and they were like. This isn't happening. Yeah. Like, you're not doing this to my character. Yeah, no, that's, I think it's, it's so obvious that they they'd messed up so big. I think they mm. just rushed it they, that series. But yeah, that really let me down because that was probably would have been my favorite if there was a bit of a better mm. ending. Yeah. Who do you want to um end up on the throne? I wanted. I wanted Sansa. I wanted her too. Yeah, I feel good. like she went through. I would feel like she went through a lot, and like it would have just been amazing to see her at the top, like because it's a proper like never give up story. Like you never know where it's gonna go. So I would have been happy with that. Yeah, I'd have probably well, I'd have said anybody, but Bran, who actually yeah. ended up there. Yeah, I yeah, him. randomly, it was like it's like they picked it out of a hat. It was like okay, fair <laughs> enough. We're gonna give it to him. Cool. <laughs> okay, I guess we move. But no, nah, I I would have wanted would Sansa or or Arya to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any others? Uh, I watch Drag Race on Netflix. Mm, mm, I mean, watch that all the time. <laughs> um, what else do I watch? Just finished Never Have I Ever or something that just come on Netflix. Um, just a load of random stuff, to be honest. I'll watch, mm. I'll watch whatever, as long as... Well, just whatever's on I don't yeah. mind I'll give everything but <laughs> yeah some things like that are on too long I just can't be bothered if it's on for like two two and a half hours like a film for example if a film's on for like two and a half hours I won't even look at it it's just yeah. attention span to concentrate for that long yeah so you're like a TikTok person you just need it six yeah. seconds keep scrolling six <laughs> seconds like just get through I'll look at TikTok thinking I'm on it for 10 minutes and then yeah. I'll, I'll I've been on it for about four hours yeah you're like oh I've missed training I've watched TikTok too long <laughs> <laughs> what music are you listening to? What gets you pumped before a game? Um, I love Drake. Mm-hmm. And I love... So the music that we have on the playlist um, is quite... Like, pre-match play- playlist is quite lively. So it's like we okay. have... Um, what do we, we have, like, Waka Waka by Shakira, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. And what else? We have Can't Hold Us by Michael Moore. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, proper good vibes before a game. Um, I like, yeah, I like Best I Ever Had by Drake. That's yeah. one of my favorite. Before a game? Yeah, 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 I like Yeah, all right. I hear it. I like that. Um, I do love a bit of Bruno Mars, but he's not really like pre-game. Yeah, pre-game. he's very, very smooth. You don't, you don't want to be playing too yeah. smooth like that. <laughs> but what is that? I would say... Yeah, probably just Drake or Chris Brown. Okay. Again, Chris Brown's a bit difficult because he's got a lot of smooth songs as well. So. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get caught up in the wrong drive. That's why I kind of just leave it to to people like Lashante and Paige who just yeah. do the, make it a bit more <laughs> <laughs> the right move. 
what kind of person are you before the game? Are you trying to talk to people? Are you just headphones in? Or are you just like, are you just kind of assessing the situation? Um, I wouldn't put my headphones in. I think I would be so in my head if I did that. <laughs> and also I don't know how people do that when everyone's so lively and, and the music's on and everyone's bouncing around and you can just sit there with your headphones in and block it all out. <laughs> yeah. That head. But yeah, I like to chat to people and I'm quite relaxed before a game. Um, I think, yeah, I think if I didn't chat to anybody, I think I'd get in my own head a bit. I like to just get around and, and just have normal banter like I usually do on a daily basis. And then yeah. when it comes to the game, you switch on. Yeah. Who would you put in your five-a-side team? As in from the Super, the super League or just anyone? We, or can from do, we, can do, we can do Super League and then anyone. Okay. Um, Super League. I'm not going to pick anyone from Leicester just so there's no, ah, cool, no favourite. Cool. Fair fan. enough. <laughs> um, Super League, I'd put Berger in goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I would put... I'd put Leah Williamson from Arsenal. Yep. And I would put... Hmm... I think I'd put Niedema up front, obviously, because that yeah. goes all. Yeah. I'd put Paris in now that she's she's joined. Yeah, it's uh, looking very arsenal Yeah, <laughs> I think they're really, really good, good individuals. Yeah, yeah. Um, in centre mid, oh, I'd put Frank Kirby. How many have I got? One, two, three. I think, do I need one more? I'd put um, Sam Kerr if I okay. needed one. Yeah, all right, cool. That is a very, very solid, very solid. I'll yeah, they'd, Sam- they'd win everything. They'd win everything. Uh, she's, she'd, be, she'd be good in just the one, just to make yeah. things tick. Yeah, I get you. Now, who would you be your anyone in your top five now? So anyone as in as in just women's football or men? Uh, you could mix it. You could mix it. Cool. Right, okay. Yeah. So I would definitely put Alison in goal. And that's okay. not just because he's fan, but he is yeah. his feet. Yeah. Um, I would put Van Dyke. <laughs> this is going to sound yeah. so Liverpool. The first one was Arsenal. <laughs> now this one's Liverpool. Fair enough. <laughs> I would put Van Dyke in. Mm-hmm. And I would put. So I don't know actually a lot of the Barcelona players' names, the yeah. women. Oh, okay. But yeah. Obviously, won Champions League. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely put that girl that just won the Ballon d'Or. I don't know her name. Oh, Pateas, Alexia Pateas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Paula. Um, I would put hmm, five aside. Oh, I've got to put Messi in. Yeah. And then, um, hmm. I would put Grealish. I think Grealish should be good enough by the side. That's a shout. But yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. How do you cope when things might not go your way on the pitch? Or like if you suffer a defeat or like you don't feel you had the best training session, how do you kind of come back from it? Um, I like to watch the game back as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, I think some people probably prefer to have a bit of a break and think about it. But I like to, as soon as I'm home, if, for example, if training's uploaded straight away, I'll go home and watch it straight away, just so mm. I know where my head's at and I can think. Then I'll, it's out of my way. Yeah. And I think about something else for the rest of the day. It's, uh, same with the game. I'll watch it back as soon as it's it's on. Um, with like defeat and and around stuff like that, I think at Carve I was kind of in that um, situation where we we didn't win a lot, so yeah. I had to kind of deal with. Um, and I think just taking it as a game, one game at a time, and just as soon as you've it, you've got home and you've watched the game and that's it, you just put it behind you and just think, you know what, we've got a whole week now before the next one. So yeah. try and put that like that. I don't think there's any point in thinking about that game for longer than a couple of hours after you've watched it because you can't affect it again and you can't yeah. make any difference. So, yeah, I just think you have to... For me, just immediately watch it, get out of the way, think about it, then that's it, over and done with, move yeah. on. You've got to put it in the bin. Put yeah. it in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Done. <laughs> Some of them. 
definitely in the bin straight away. <laughs> and then I'll switch it to the other side. So you won the you won promotion with Leicester. How long do you stay on that high for? Because like it's I saw it, it was complete vibes, everyone was having a sick time. So it's like, how long do you stay on that buzz for? Um, I think with that, it's different because it was the end of the season. So that was our, apart from obviously the Man United game, which was the week after actually. Oh, so man. with the league, I had to we we had to enjoy it on the day, yeah, on the day after probably. And then once we got back into training, it was right. It's that's over now. You've got one yeah. more game, and then you enjoy yourself. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Man United was we won, so that was again it went mm. up and up. Um, so yeah, I think after that, obviously we had like a month off, so I was able to enjoy it for like three or four days, and then yeah. maybe a week. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, then it was just relax now. You're off football for a month. Don't think about it. Try and do some different things. Yeah. Try and enjoy it in other ways, and then you can still kind of bring that kind of energy for preseason as well. I think it's obviously you've got different players now in the squad, but. You can still kind of think about the good times that you had when you put your mind to it, to because yeah. I know people will get that buzz from from that and bring it into preseason as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think I would do bring it into preseason still. Not not watch the goal back over and over again, yeah. but not <laughs> use that energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, how would you describe yourself as a player? I would say fast. I would say. Unselfish, I think I'm quite a, an unselfish person. Mm. I'm quite technical. I like to, I think I'm quite different. I love to press. I love to run around. I work quite hard. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I like to to create, um, as a, obviously as a striker or a winger or even as a midfielder. Um, you probably wouldn't get a lot of, of people that think about creating more than, than scoring, but my head... Yeah years on on trying to find that right pass or trying to find something to create a chance yeah um so yeah i think i'm a bit different when it comes to that but i do yeah i love a, a 1v1 and a, a technical kind of side to it as well that's the thing and you're a liverpool fan so i'm i'm hearing kind of Firmino vibes like how you want the best for the team like you're still gonna make sure you get yours as well so yeah, yeah i think it's gonna be really exciting to see you play this season how do you feel like, what's your thoughts on the whole Sky broadcasting deal? Like, what's it going to be like having the games on Sky Sports for you as a player? It's massive. Um, obviously, for me, especially not being ever in this situation before. Mm. Uh, when we had our we had our media day the other day, and Sky were there, and everyone was there, like trying to get different videos and gifts and stuff made, and it was mind blowing to me. I, mm. I think in my head, I don't realize where I'm at um, yeah. with this deal and like, I have to kind of think well like Sky are here they, they want you on this because you're yeah. going to be the guy whereas like my friends and my family are like oh we'll watch you on TV next year and I think it's just massive in terms of just getting people being able to watch women's football for me yeah. I never watched it because it was never on anything mm. and then obviously that World Cup it was on BBC or ITV and, yeah. and then you have the access to watch it and then you start to to enjoy enjoy watching the game and obviously the more it's on sky and the more it's on bbc and especially for this season the amount of fans that the teams are going to get it's just going to increase every single week yeah it's 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 amazing for for us as players to experience that and experience just a little bit of of what the men would would experience on a day-to-day basis yeah definitely what would you tell 10 year old shannon from what you know now in your journey? I would say to always back yourself. Um, I think I always have done, and it's something I've always tried to, to keep is, you know, you know, you're a good player. Always, always remember that. And I'd also say go out and, and make sure you're enjoying your football and make sure you play football. Because I think a lot of young kids can, can join an academy and, uh, go through the system and everything's great and then you sat on the development or the first team bench and you're not getting a game mm. just because you've been in that club your whole life go out and, and join another team and and get some minutes because you play football because you enjoy it mm. and for me especially when I was I was at Villa 
um, and I didn't see myself at that time but who, who was there who was in charge so I yeah. just went to college in the National League dropped down a few levels and, and just played football and enjoyed it and then yeah. get yourself further and further so yeah just always always back yourself and you know it'll, it'll work out so far so good yeah, so far so good. Sky come in, King Power <laughs> Stadium promotions. It's a, it's a nice <laughs> story so far. How does your family feel about it all? Like, do you ever feel like, like, oh my god, guys, I'm just a normal person. Like, I'm just going, <laughs> I'm just going to work. That's all I'm doing. I'm just going to work and coming home. How do they feel? Well, my dad's my my number one fan. He yeah. always has been. Um, you know, he'll tell me how I've played every game. He's been to every single game I've ever played. Mm. He's He's so he's made up over it, and they obviously don't see me any different. And yeah, same mom, she's exactly the same as my dad. They both come to every single game that I play, so for them, it's no different, especially my nan now. Like, my nan just bought a Leicester top, you know, we love to see it. She's ready for the King Power, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think all my family now, now I'm at Leicester, like more distant family, have, have realized like it's more serious and obviously it's now professional mm. uh, but these like yeah these like don't don't care they don't treat me any different especially my brother my brother hates football doesn't know about it, so <laughs> to him nothing <laughs> to him he yeah. doesn't care at all. but yeah they're all they're all they all love it especially my daddy and my mom they they love it yeah do you feel a sense of like how how is it going to be for you when you're in the league with players like me, Demar, Kirby, Kerr? Will you kind of like will you feel starstruck or is it just kind of like you need I need to beat you? You're in front of me, you're on a different team, I need to beat you, sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna feel starstruck. I know I know who the people are, but yeah. Time I'm exactly the same as them now. I'm in the same position. I'm yeah. the same. I'm doing the same thing. So it's just it's just you know, I'm here to beat you. I'm here to to be better than you. So that's that's how I'm gonna approach every single game. It's just I want to win. I want to be the best player in the team. Want to be the best yeah. player in the league. So yeah, that that's how I look at it. Not phased. You, yeah. Do you set yourself targets um like by a game, or do you set yourself targets for the season? Like this is what I want to do this season, or do you just kind of let it come to you? Um. So no, I've set targets with my dad, and then I've set targets with you know a, a meal at, at training and um so we've looked through them and then obviously game by game you just it's just you know you want to play first and foremost you want to get into the team and then yeah. after that build from that but yeah I do set targets every season oh it's not like a big dramatic thing it's just something to know where I'm at at the end of the season yeah. how I've come come on but yeah game by game I think it just depends on who you're playing and, and if you're playing yeah What's it like working with someone like Emil Heskey, with who has such a career? Yeah, he's he's mad. He's he's a really nice guy. Um, he and you wouldn't think he he played. Um, he would you wouldn't think he was that big of a, a player when yeah. when you meet. Him. Not like that at all. He's not like a some flashy guy that that you know brags about playing for England or whatever. He's such a nice down to earth bloke. That he, you know he's a a coach first and foremost now for us yeah. um, and I mean for me obviously as a Liverpool fan as well it was a bit mad to, to meet him firstly but now I'm you know I do a lot of a lot of work with him after training on on finishing and stuff yeah. like that and I just think while he's there you might as well use his you know his knowledge of the game and his experience to the best of your ability and make the most of it while he's here so yeah. that's what I like to just annoy him and make sure he's outside of me after training and doing stuff because yeah, yeah more not, he's there <laughs> yeah <it>. definitely <laughs> might as well use it what's your nando's order cool right well it's lemon and herb first and foremost it's lovely cool, but yeah you I gotta want to taste it it sometimes if it's too hot you can't taste it your tongue's just on the floor <laughs> i love i actually love the taste but i also cannot hack spice yeah I feel like I would be able to to handle medium it's just if I order it one day and it ruins my dinner I'm yeah, gonna it's, be it's, it's, it's gone wasted. now <laughs> not, I'm not even gonna ever attempt it yeah um butterfly chicken mm-hmm. um peri peri chips and garlic bread yeah that's a solid order that's a solid order I'd have that uh four chicken thighs lemon and herb I get the chips don't get peri sweet chips and I get rice 
You get plain chips? I get plain chips. Yeah. That's controversial. It is controversial, but you know what? Honesty is the best policy. <laughs> <laughs> and the final question. If you was a manager, what would be your formation? What's your favourite formation? Hmm. I would say a 4-3-3, probably. What do you like about the 4-3-3? For me, as a player, I like that I can play in as a striker or a winger or even mm. the high fielder. So it's a lot for me to be able to fit in somewhere. Um, but I also think with four three three, it's flexible. You can you can go attacking. You can have two two higher centre mids, or you can have defensively and have two fours. Um, you've got you know wingers that can either be really wide, or they can be like second and third strikers. And then you obviously also have four at the back to, to cover it. So you could pretty much have five attackers in that formation, depending on how you want to play. Um, and obviously, as an attacker, I want as many attackers as possible. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that brings it to an end. Shannon, is there anything you want to tell the people? Is there anything you want to let people know, your socials? Uh, yeah, just Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I think it's just ShanoB09 or ShanoB9. Um, and, and come and watch a game at, at the King Power. That is perfect. Thank you.